All right, so we're joined now via Skype by Jennifer Ferguson, the woman who made uh, these claims uh, from her base in, in Sweden. Jennifer, thank you very much for joining us this evening. What's your reaction uh, to his statement? Are you surprised? Are you disappointed? I'm not surprised, but I still feel Danny is maintaining an invisibility. And uh, as much as I'm standing owning my story and my truth without a wall of legal representation or people navigating for me, I'm standing holding the power of my truth. I'm not seeing Danny doing the same thing. He's misconstruing on some level. He says, I mean, if he wanted really to have his, his, the allegation ventilated in court, then he could have laid a defamation suit against me for harming his reputation. The burden of proof is less at the ballots based on balance of probabilities. He's running scared, I feel, and now he, the, the, the um, statement came on the heels of a third woman who had disclosed that she had been sexually harassed by Mr. Yodan. And now today have a fourth woman that is also coming forward. So the amount of women is building. And of course, I have, my offer for mediation has been, I do believe that truth does set us free, even if it's shameful and, and, and causes us pain. But I do believe that the story One Night in PE is much bigger and it involves our entire nation. It's a global pandemic of, of, of patriarchal pathology that is playing itself out on especially women. So I still, I still maintain that we hold the higher moral ground in this situation because we are speaking the truth fiercely, because we're facing cameras, we're facing journalists, we consistent. I'm not seeing the same thing from Mr. York. Uh, and I thank you for speaking to us tonight. Uh, explain the thinking behind your initial thinking, uh, that arbitration process, something that may have led to you even forgiving him. Uh, now that uh, it seems other women may have been in danger as well, does, does that mean uh, something more serious, that, that a court uh, may be the right place? Would you ever consider going to court? I mean, as anybody who followed the crazy uh, litigation, the crazy court, uh, court process knows the terrible, terrible exposure that happens, especially for victims of rape in that situation. Nobody emerges with their spine straight, with their dignity intact. The only ones really that benefit are the lawyers. They make a lot of money out of it. But it's dehumanizing. And I feel South Africa, we've got a fantastic tradition we have a legacy of truth and reconciliation commission that even though it was flawed and not complete but restorative justice that we can meet each other as human beings that danny can come forward and say what happened there i don't fully understand what what drives me there's something in me that makes me do things that i can't control it causes havoc in my life and has done so for many many years this happened to me when I was a child. This is the language. This is where I, I, this is my context. I listen to him. He listens to me. And there's a meeting point where we can, at a moment, recognize each other as fully, as two human beings. A moment. And that's what I would have, and I still believe, is possible. But it takes much more courage than standing and, and, and giving a, 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 a media statement of denial. Ms. And it takes much more courage than going into a court of law. Ms. Ferguson, I, I want to keep you for as long as, as we can. Uh, we're losing the link, but if I can throw in, you, you broke your silence after 24 years. Uh, these other women are speaking as well. And, and I think this is something that men uh, need to uh, discuss. Uh, activists want everybody to understand that sometimes there are reasons, there are things going on in, in women's lives that, that make them hold off. Uh, can, you, can you just explain to us what, what it was like then and, and what led to you coming out uh, more than two decades later? I mean, for me, it, it's been a, a really excruciating personal journey of coming to to terms with something that has been lying dormant like like a, a hidden space of shame in my own life as much as I've been an activist fighting for truth, for justice, for liberation out there to really live that truth in my own life. This has been a threshold. I 
us. And uh, I, I fully believe that, that, that it's this kind of journey where we begin with our journey of personal healing, that we do change the whole world, that we have the power. And South Africa, we're doing that journey every single day. We're dealing with a devastating past, a systemic past that violates us. So how do we really change? We work on the systemic levels, but at the end, we are left with our own journey of healing. And how that journey unfolds is a mystery. There are no, there are no shortcuts, and there's no thing. It's beyond time. It's beyond rationale. And uh, I've had to trust that, that story. I've had to trust that this is, this is, I'm authoring my story, and I'm going to write it till its end. And I hope that I'm taking a lot of people with me on that journey of healing because I know that there are thousands and thousands of people, not only outside here, Sweden, where I'm living, in my country, my beloved country, South Africa. Finally, uh, d does life go on for you or is this creating a, a pause? Uh, we know you as an MP, as a singer here, you, you're now based in Sweden. Uh, can you carry on, I, especially now that he's saying yes. basically that you, you're lying, that we're in a standoff? I live a very simple life here in Sweden. As I've said, you know, I've got nothing to lose with this disclosure. I've got no position. I haven't accumulated lots of wealth. I live a, a simple life with my, my children, writing music, working with choirs. And we could say healing. I do healing work. But um, I know that um, this, this process for my family has been an extraordinary time. It's been confronting. We've all had to look at ourselves. We've all had to do deep, deep self-reflection. We've grieved. We've sorrowed. And we've emerged with a sense of love and real support for each other. And I would wish that for Mr. Yordan, because my understanding is that, that I know very little about him. I've had to really just Google, you know, find out who is this man, actually. But my sense is that he is a man, he has, a, has made choices that sacrificed his family life. He himself has said that he hasn't been present. And I think that his behavior is, is, is indicative of a very troubled man in troubled relationships. And I would wish that he could heal as well within his family constellation. His wife is a priest. And I, I stand for it's, it's, I have empathy with their situation in as much as that is possible for, for, for where they, they must be. That cannot be very good for them. All right, Jennifer Ferguson, we appreciate your time uh, tonight uh, via Skype from Sweden, uh, sticking by her, her claims uh, but not keen on a court process, which she discussed. Danny Jordan uh, today breaking his silence and denying that claim of rape.